Just want to thank you for being here. You can find more conversations just like this one on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. It's time to play it forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 541 is with mega producer Dean Devlin from Leverage Redemption on Free VTV. I am doing well. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. And we're talking about Leverage Redemption, dude. I mean, this was this was a binge watch for my wife and I. Oh, that's fantastic. What is that like for you to be jumping into into this binge watching generation that we've be, you know that we've actually developed into? Is it does it open up the platform or is it harder to work with? You know, I think it's 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 a really interesting development in that it allows people to dive inside the world of a show and just stay there for a long period of time. You know, it, it's funny. You know, I've heard from all these streaming platforms that. By far, people choose to watch an episode of television than they do to watch a movie. They, you know, they don't want to commit to two hours of watching a movie, but they'll commit to an hour. And then they'll watch three episodes in a row. So they'll end up actually watching more than a movie. Uh, but I think that, that, that that's actually kind of good because it puts the onus on us as filmmakers to, to create something that's worthy of them staying on the platform that long. Well, I love the idea that you guys have teamed up with Freebie to put Leverage Redemption on there because, I mean, this is a total connection for all viewers. Yeah, and I think, look, I, I, you know, I, I think a lot of people ended up cutting their cable when the, the price tag got around $100 a month, and they said, look, that's a lot of money for me to pay for television. And so they, they, they migrated over to these streaming platforms, but, you know, as time has gone by, more and more streaming platforms have popped up, the prices of streaming has gone up, you know, and, and I think for the average person, they're like, wait, I'm back to $100 a month again. And so, you know, Amazon, I think, really wisely created Freebie as a way to give people more content but to get it for free. And, uh, uh, you know, being able to now produce two new shows for them and having all of my old shows on freebie, it's been this real gift to be able to present things and to tell people, yeah, you can watch all this and you don't have to pay for it. You've, you've always been in touch with, with, with subject matters that, that we can all deal with. I mean, on, on Leverage Redemption, we talked about a husband and wife running a multi-level scam. I mean, do you, do you step into the newspapers and say, okay, I can build a story around this? You know, I think the very original series of Leverage was around the time that Enron was happening. Mm. And I'll never forget, uh, uh, John Rogers, our, one of our executive producers and writers, uh, you know, he turned to, to everyone in the room and said, I'd really love to punch these guys in the neck. <laughs> and I was like, great, let's make a show where every week we find another one of these guys and we punch him in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that that's your creativity, you know. I mean, it's given birth in every episode. I mean, I love that idea where you can take reality and move it forward. You create content. Yeah, and as long as there are corporate bad guys or, or horrible, rich, and powerful people, you know, we'll never run out of episodes to do. You have to know inside your creative heart, though, that you've got the right actors in the right place, and that's why there's a connection with so many viewers. That's 99% of television, I think, is, is having great characters and actors who can just bring them to life and make them enjoyable. Yes, our stories are cool and, and uh, the plots are fun, but at the end of the day, it's these characters that we fall in love with and we want to go on a journey with them every week and we're blessed to have really one of the most talented cast of people who are are not just great in front of the camera they're lovely behind the scenes and it just makes the whole thing this 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 joyful experience of, of storytelling are you like a child in a candy store in the way that when a scene comes together perfectly it's like oh my god and i mean you there's there's that surge of you know of, of greatness that go, you know you know goes into your heart Oh my God, it happens all the time. You know, I, I direct a lot of these episodes and very often I'll be watching the monitor directing and I won't say cut because I'm just watching it like I'm a fan. And my first AD will come over and go, do you want to cut now? Oh yeah, 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 cut, cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have the eye in the way that when you look at these actors and I mean, because I mean, we're always looking forward to what's going to be happening with the next generation of producers and writers and things like that. Being behind that camera, do you see the future? I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, I never try to get too intellectual about the craft or what's going on. I, I, I've always approached it like a fan. Mm -hmm. I make the stuff I want to see, and I hope that other people have the same taste that I have. And, you know, I, I have an enormous amount of passion over the stuff I make, but it's because I like it personally. And luckily, my passion has been able to be infectious to some degree, and other people have shared that passion. Yeah. You know, the one, the one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that to get to that passion, though, you, you've had a journey. It, it didn't just, just happen overnight. I mean, that's the one thing that, you know, that directors and stuff like that, we, we don't understand your process. But yet, because of things like this, this conversation, we get, we get to learn more about you. 
Well, you know, our, our failures teach us more than our successes. And uh, I, I've been blessed with both. <laughs> 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 but I've tried to take my failures and, and use them to build uh, uh, tools to tell stories better, to, 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 to make things more engaging. And, you know, uh, that's the beauty of television. You know, you, you do a, a movie that doesn't work. It's there forever as this little eyesore. Yeah. But, you know, you do a pilot and it doesn't quite work. You can, you can make it better in the second episode. You can make it even better in the third episode. And by season four, you, you might really know how to tell that story. So television is, is a great gift for filmmakers. One of the things that Howard Stern has talked about, first of all, he is a big binge watcher, period. But he always talks about that he wants all of his stories at one time so he can have, you know, three or four hours. What, what is your belief as that, as that person behind the cameras? Do, do we need to wait for that week like we used to do with the old three networks? You know, I think it depends on the story. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think, I think, for instance, our fans are incredibly engaged in the show. I mean, they debate yes. every aspect of the show. They want to talk about every storyline. They want to guess where it's going. So by dropping an episode a week, it gives them a whole week where they can, like, talk to each other and, and, and engage with the show. For those who want to binge, well, then they wait a little while until enough episodes are on the air, and then they binge them. So I think I think there there's an advantage to both. You know, this season we dropped three on the first night just to give a, a, a binge quality for people, and then we've been dropping one episode a week so that we've had this enormous fan engagement. I mean, if you, if you just search the hashtag Leverage Redemption, it's shocking how much conversation uh, and fan engagement there is and, and, and how incredibly positive they are. Um, but I think that by dropping it once a week, it allows them time to talk about each show. You're, you're so right about that, because when, when you bring up Leverage Redemption, you should see the way that people's eyes light up, because it feels like that they've made a connection with somebody that goes, oh, my God, you're watching that one, too? I mean, you've created water cooler conversation. Yeah, and, and people have a, a kind of an ownership of the show that, that you know, there's, there's a lot of shows that have, had, that have gigantic marketing behind it. And everywhere you go, you see a billboard, and a poster and, and a TV commercial. And, and it feels a little bit shoved down your throat. But the leverage fans, they feel like they own the show. They feel like they <laughs> found the show. And, that, and they're the ones telling other people about it. And it's great. I'll, I'll never forget, we, we, were, we were scouting a location in season one in New Orleans. And, and there was a, a, a young black fella, I think he was like 18 years old, and, and he was showing us this property. And then he goes, what, what show are you guys doing? And we said, oh, we're, uh, we're revamping the show, Leverage. And he stopped dead in his tracks and he turned and he just quietly said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I can see he was a giant fan of the show and he knew every episode and he wanted to talk about uh, Al Desage and he wanted to talk about Beth Risha. And it's just so great when you get that kind of response because there is this sense of ownership that the fans have. Well, through you, we are all being entertained, man. And I can't thank you enough for being on the show today, dude. Oh, Errol, thank you for having me. You bet. You be brilliant today, okay? (laughs) You too.